automation, how important is it? We all know it's important, so it's a rhetorical question, but I'm here with Alec today, and we're gonna talk about a cell that he set up, which includes UR robots, which includes fifth access work holding, and a Martin Trunnion table to go along with this TM2 from Haas. Alec is an incredible dude, and I get to learn from him today, just like you guys, so thank you all for joining us, and Alec, thank you for joining us as well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're looking at this Haas machine, a TM2, and we're looking at this fifth axis work holding as well. Overall, this automation cell. I guess first I want to ask is, because you look so young, how difficult or easy was it to set up? Uh, so setting up stuff like this is actually very easy. The URs are incredibly user friendly. So it's just a matter of going in, setting your IOs to devices, and then a bunch of pick positions. Place positions, you're good to go. When I ask you that question and I bring up youth, it's important because there's a generation out there that's kind of trying to embrace automation because we know we need it, but I wanted to bring up the ease of that because do you think this is easy for everyone, maybe even someone that hasn't adapted to computers, which I'm sure you have? Yeah, so, I mean, younger generation growing up with technology is definitely better off for programming something like this. But with that gap, if you can learn to use a computer, you can learn to use a UR robot pretty easy with all the software they have out there. What yeah. I like about UR is they have been around for a long time. As far as cobots are concerned, they've been around for a long time and everyone seems to have a unique piece of software that they want to engage with the UR. So the people who want automation through these cobots can actually select their own software to go along with it, can't they? Uh, yes, they can. So there's all sorts of different UR caps. It's specific things you can download to the robot. You can have things that do you uh, force commands, so find surfaces, X amount of force, it knows it's met it. Uh, we have certain grippers, we have vacuums, regular metal grippers, we have all sorts of things, all with their own software. So you can really customize a UR to whatever you need it to do. I like that, Alec. Now I wanna talk a little bit about what I'm seeing here. Now, Fifth Axis is a US made product. It's a quality product, and they're just now getting into the automation world and gonna continue to grow, I'm certain of that. But as I look here, and as I see this cell moving seamlessly, I'm also noticing there's different parts on each one of these vices, which allows me to have multiple jobs set up because ultimately, it's picking up and setting down from the same place, and I can just switch it out, right? Yep, yes it is. So uh, with these vices, you can put whatever dovetailed stock that you want into these pinch blocks. So you can go one operation, load up, let's say your round stock, uh, set a job up, run that, and then next day if you want, just load a different program into the machine, do your setup, start putting square stock in for a new part, you have the same program with the robot. These days, and I see this all the time, and so do you guys as well when we do these interviews, the batch sizes keep going down. We're not running millions of parts for the most part anymore. We're running batches of five or six. So this type of operation seems really user friendly to me. Would you agree? Oh yeah, for sure. It's a lot easier than going in, setting up a vice, doing custom work holding. If all you have to do is dovetail, it's easier than machining chuck jaws every time. I mean, with soft jaws or custom machine jaws for any sort of chuck or uh, vice, you're getting, you're getting rigidity, but Nothing like this, You're, nothing like a dovetail. I see that in my line of work as well. And I'd like to take a moment, if it's okay with you, Alec, to talk a little bit about something or a company that I like a lot, which is Martin Trunnion. Now, the world we live in, we're trying to get more automated. And before we got into the five axis world, there was a lot of investment in the three axis world, which is what I'm looking at here. However, adding a plus two or adding a Trunnion to this situation allows us to get to multiple sides. Where do you see the value in adding a Trunnion? So adding a Trunnion mostly gets you a three axis machine to like a three plus two or three plus one, four axis machine. It uh, a lot more detail parts a lot more you can do out of one machine, and it's a lot less expensive than buying an entire new machine when you could just throw in a rotary and trunnion. Isn't that the truth? And we're all pinching pennies these days okay. to make sure that we're making profit from everything we're doing. And when I look at this as well, and I think about the ability to switch from side to side, the first thing that pops into my mind, Alec, is the fact of how many times do we need to move apart to machine a different side prior to investing in one of these, and how much downtime and spindle downtime 
goes into, and let's just throw this in there, maybe I don't set it up right on the second go and now I've scrapped a part. This all is involved in the fact that I can do more sides in the one piece of investment. So adding the rotary and trunnion is a lot better because instead of doing multiple flips on one part uh, to machine it, it has a lot more consistency with you just not touching it as much. Absolutely right. For everyone out there watching, thank you so much for watching. This has been a really great episode, in my opinion, with Alec talking about automation, the advancements from Fifth Axis, and the addition of Martin Trunyan on this Haas machine. I hope this has helped you as much as it's helped me today. And Alec, thank you so much for being a part of the show. It's no problem. It was my pleasure.